I, I think it's it's really interesting how well this stuff works out. So this is total three. So the altcoin market minus USDT market cap divided by Bitcoin. And you'll see that alts tend to top out at parity with respect to Bitcoin, right? When the altcoin market cap it equals the Bitcoin market cap at one, that's where they tend to top out. And where they tend to bottom out is around 25% of Bitcoin's market cap. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, all right, well, altcoins are currently 42% of Bitcoin's market cap. What happens if we go back down here? That's another 40% drop, <laughs> you know, wow. on, their, on their Bitcoin pairs, right? On their Bitcoin pairs. And the other fascinating thing about this is roll back the clock exactly four years. We were at the same valuation. All Bitcoin <laughs> pairs were collectively at the same valuation in July. And then by September, they had dropped that 40%. Again, this is this is a little bit different than what you're talking about because you're looking at their USD valuations, right? And their wow. USD valuations can do all sorts of things. But it's always, what is their Bitcoin valuation doing, right? And are they, are they getting wrecked against Bitcoin? Are they not? And I think the reason I look at this is because I want to know when does the altcoin market become a better macro investment, right? Because you're looking at the short term stuff, right? You're looking right. at the, the short term play. How can I squeeze as much as much out of this? Because it's like, you know, you have to trade with what you're given, right? If you're given if you're given an altcoin bear market, you trade the altcoin bear market. Yep. But I'm, I'm trying to figure out, like, when does the altcoin market finally become worth the risk? And While Bitcoin has been thriving in 2023, now trading at around $30,000, most altcoins are falling apart. And there's a deep reason why. And most of them didn't even find their bottom yet. There's more downside incoming, according to the charts Gareth and Ben Cowan are seeing. Just check this out. You know, one thing that's interesting to me, and this is actually something I think we talked about maybe last week, um, the social risk is just hit a new milestone. Um, this is, you know, I've been tracking this forever. And the social risk, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's basically just tracking like retail social interest in the cryptoverse. And we have gone down to the lowest wristband for the first time in quite a long period of time. I mean, the last time that we entered into this level from higher levels was all the way back over here in October of 2018. So wow. it has taken a long time, Gareth. And you know, one of the things I, I think that has contributed to to just how much longer people have stuck around this time as opposed to, you know, the last cycle goes to the all the excess liquidity, right? I mean, it just, you know, no business cycle is the same. And I have to think that some of this excess liquidity created by the Fed, you know, when they printed so much money, it just it takes a long time to absorb that back up. And I, I think that's also going to be reflected in the social sentiment in the space, right? We're seeing YouTube views go down across most crypto channels. We're seeing Twitter followers and all this stuff go down. Ultimately, though, we know that that should theoretically create opportunity. I mean, as you can see, right, it, when it goes to the lowest levels, um, that's when slides. I'm paying attention. When I, when I look at this, is who's the marginal buyer of, 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 you know, the altcoin market, right? Who's the buyer? Back over here, we, we saw it going up right so like yes it was possible that price goes down because price is always irrational in the short term right it's possible that price goes down but we saw new people coming into the space right so you knew there was like it was we were trending in the right direction in terms of bringing people to the table for crypto yeah. now it's trending in the opposite direction so that's not to say that you can't have squeezes higher I and mean, when we've seen that we, we normally see that in pre-having years but one interesting thing to clean this up a little bit is to take, say, like a, a 30 day moving average. Right. And and here it's when you start to spend a long time trending in the wrong direction, price normally does resolve in that direction. Right. Yeah. Um, it's like if you if you keep trending higher on the social risk for a long time, it doesn't mean that price can't go down in the short term, but eventually it resolves higher with the social risk. If it keeps going lower, then I would have, I would assume that eventually the price would resolve lower more so in line with the general general sentiment of the cryptoverse. You're saying prices actually of, of Bitcoin has moved higher. Obviously, alts have gone lower in general. But also the thing that I would kind of take note of is that it doesn't look like we're at the levels that we saw in 2019 and 2020 yet. We still have further downside to go as well. And, and the first thing that jumps out to me would be saying, OK, well, during those periods, you had quantitative easing, right? So there was Federal Reserve printing money. Interest rates were lower. We now have a scenario where we're still above that that level, those bottoms, but we have liquidity being sucked out of the market. So in the very least, if it was just me, I would say likely the 
that social index should get down to those lows, if not go a little bit lower than what we saw then because of the lack of liquidity. The social risk has been going lower, but all coins have also been going lower, right? A lot of them have already put in new lows. So yeah. I'm, I'm thinking maybe the social risk is a great indicator for when altcoins become worth the risk. Gareth and Ben even go deeper in their analysis, checking some altcoins specifically. If you own any of these, please pay attention. This is the Polygon chart. And again, just from a pure technical standpoint, you see this trend line and then this one, which look, this one goes all the way back to February of this year, connecting through these highs. And look at what's happening to Matic right here, Polygon. It's beginning to break out. So again, I, and by the way, this doesn't mean like, oh, it's going back to a dollar or five dollars. This is just a short term breakout where upside to me, maybe back to about 83 cents, which again, 13 cents higher um, on a 70 cent move. That's actually, what is that? About 14, a 20 percent move. So, so again, you know, this just crossed my plate this morning and I'm like, OK, this does kind of tell me that the alts may at least some of these alts that have really been beaten down may be on the verge of getting a little reflex rally to the upside. This one, interestingly enough, is not doing that. So for me, this area right here would be the breakout, these highs. And short term, we haven't even gone up there. Matic, in comparison, would be trading up against this downsloping line or breaking above. So interestingly enough, Cardano is lagging Polygon versus Polygon's actually looking a lot stronger relative to some of the other altcoins. So yeah, interesting. The Solana move has been really impressive, and that's another alt, right? Where Solana just in the last really just since June, mid-June, so we're talking less than a month or right about a month, is up 50% off of its lows, which is very, very impressive. Why is this happening? If we look at fundamentals, people fear the SEC's decisions about altcoins, as most of these are considered securities, and the SEC is enforcing regulation. But the charts also give a clear explanation of what's happening. Yeah, and just and just for those of you out there that are new to technical analysis, one of the reasons why this or the main, you know, just like you're mentioning, there's a 20 moving average there. But also when you look at price and it kind of comes down and it trades sideways, the reason why that creates resistance when you're below and you're coming back above is because to go sideways in a chart, there's a lot of buyers and sellers that are meeting, right? They're, they're kind of buyers are selling um, and then, or, or buyers are buying, sellers are selling. And that's why price doesn't go up or down. It kind of just goes sideways, but you get a whole new group of buyers there, right? So think about, let's say, let's say I was there and I'm not, but let's say I was one of the buyers and I was at 85 cents. Well, all of a sudden it broke down. I thought it was gonna go this way. And again, I'm speaking from the perspective of being a retail trader. Uh, and instead it dumped out to 50 cents. I found myself down on this trade, you know, hypothetically down 30, 40%, right? And so the thought process is, is when I get made whole, when I get back to break even, I was sweating when it was down there. Oh my goodness, the SEC is going to, you know, crush all these things. I get back to break even. There's a, there's a psychological want for me to say, okay, I'm back to break even. My account is back to where it was cut it just get out just say be thankful and that's why these turn out to be pivot points on the chart where um there's resistance on the way back up you get all these buyers that were buying in here and then thinking it was breaking out they're all now selling and saying all right thank goodness i got out without being crushed too much i i think it's it's really interesting how well this stuff works out so this is total three so the altcoin market minus usdt market cap divided by bitcoin and you'll see that alts tend to top out at parity with respect to Bitcoin, right? When the altcoin market cap it equals the Bitcoin market cap at one, that's where they tend to top out. And where they tend to bottom out is around 25% of Bitcoin's market cap. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, all right, well, altcoins are currently 42% of Bitcoin's market cap. What happens if we go back down here? That's another 40% drop, <laughs> you know, wow. on, their, on their Bitcoin pairs, right? On their Bitcoin pairs. And the other fascinating thing about this is roll back the clock exactly four years. We were at the same valuation. All Bitcoin pairs were collectively at the same valuation in July. And then by September, they had dropped that 40%. Again, this is this is a little bit different than what you're talking about because you're looking at their USD valuations, right? And their wow. USD valuations can do all sorts of things. But it's always, what is their Bitcoin valuation doing, right? And are they are they getting racked against Bitcoin? Or are they not? And I think the reason I look at this is because I want to know when does the altcoin market become a better 
macro investment, right? Because you're looking at the short term stuff, right? You're looking right. at all the, the short term play. How can I squeeze as much as much out of this? Because it's like, you know, you have to trade with what you're given, right? If you're given if you're given an altcoin bear market, you trade the altcoin bear market. Yep. But I'm, I'm trying to figure out, like, when does the altcoin market finally become worth the risk? And I mean, could be could be within a few months. When will altcoins finally figure out their valuations? You know, the alts at some point will be able to figure out their valuations once we get clarity from the SEC, right? And so the SEC will say, okay, these are the rules. And then all of a sudden, big money will be able to start valuing these things. And so whether, you know, the market caps on a Matic should be 5 billion or 25 billion or maybe 50 billion, we don't know yet because again, we don't know what, what the real valuations are, but that will become clear. And my guess is at that point, that's where the value really starts to. And by the way, that's that's actually a good thing. Like like investors need to understand that any sort of additional information that these these coins can give us makes them the clarity and the transparency much better, which allows us even as retail investors to say, okay, I think I should pay here for this versus where it was before. Like this level right here, it has been a level where we've seen alts down yeah. before, right? I mean, so it's not to say that that can't happen. Like you could have a scenario where they where they bounce back up. It doesn't necessarily mean that the the bleed is over. It's just that we know markets do not move in a linear fashion, right? Like it's a stochastic process, and that's what really tears you know gets portfolios chopped up so much is people shifting from one view to the other every week because the market's doing something new. Right. Every right it's the emotional swings highs and the lows right this is basically an approximation of the bitcoin dominance excluding stable coins so doesn't this chart looks a lot different right than when you include stable coins i mean it really does show that it's just been in an uptrend for basically two years you know yep. um and and this is the one thing that i yeah like maybe you maybe you get a pullback to this breakout you know or to this prior resistance level right which would correspond to 56 percent right now it's at 57 and a half percent if you exclude stables you know maybe that's the the pullback that you're looking for on the altcoin market or sorry on the bitcoin dominance that would then lead to the next renewed renewed or tighter and you can see that the prior the prior moves higher here you know they, they pulled back a little bit before finding that renewed interest in the in the bitcoin dominance to to a much higher level i, I think it's a great thing that we talk about the dominance on a weekly basis because it really does tell the story, I think, of, of the cryptoverse. If you missed the last video, where they explained how the Bitcoin dominance chart illustrates what's happening to the altcoins, you may click here and check it next.